So I'm pleased to be here. Actually, the way this came about, I gave a talk to um, a group of the Western regional affiliates of bio and biotech organizations in San Diego. And Denise was in the audience, and I saw her keep nodding her head. And as soon as I got up done and left the room, she grabbed me outside and said, will you please come to Colorado and talk to our group? We're having a board meeting. So she's very persistent, and uh, I ended up <laughs> giving in, which um, I'm glad I did. So what I'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit about the culture and what's happened in San Diego with the hopes that you can potentially use some of our experience in trying to grow and develop your uh, industry here in, San in Colorado. And then the second part of the talk will be to give you a little um, biased, prejudice presentation about where I see the future of innovation going and to try to, to present potentially a new way to finance innovation because of some of the challenges that we see coming. So Connect was founded in 1985. And for those of you that recall uh, what was going on in the sort of geopolitical world, Reagan and Gorbachev had just met. Uh, the Cold War was thawing, and there were a lot of nervous defense contractors in San Diego, our major industry at that time. Almost simultaneously, we had the blow up of the savings and loan uh, banks, and we had a number of headquarter banks in San Diego, back office work, a lot of jobs. Unemployment jumped over 10%. Uh, people were putting uh, stakes in their yard saying, make a bid, any price for the home. Um, but it wasn't going well at all. So the head of the Economic Development Corporation, Dan Pegg, got in his car, drove up to the Torrey Mesa, and had a meeting with the chancellor of the University of California, San Diego, Dick Atkinson. He said, Dick, um, things aren't looking good. Uh, what is all this technology stuff I keep hearing about up in Silicon Valley? And Dick said, well, I was in at Stanford in the 60s. And he said, I watched what happened. And I will tell you that Stanford doesn't have as good a technology as we have right here in San Diego. The difference is they understand entrepreneurship, venture capital, risk taking, that nobody here has an appreciation for. These are a bunch of bankers, real estate guys, who absolutely do not understand that. So as a result of that meeting, uh, three more people were brought in. The only biotech company that existed then was Hybertech. It was in a, in a double-wide trailer in a parking lot. Um, and the CEO, David Hale, was brought in. And, and a company called Qualcomm, who nobody could pronounce back then, uh, who had just started a company in something called CDMA that nobody knew what it stood for. But Erwin Jacobs, David Hale, along with the head of the Deloitte practice there, um, Bob Weaver, got together and said, we've got to teach ourselves entrepreneurship. We got to teach the community. And so they formed this organization called Connect. So brought together by the university, by government in the form of EDC, but always led by the private sector. And the mission was pretty simple, that we would try to commercialize research. We had great research to pick from, but nobody knew how to commercialize. Second, we're going to learn about entrepreneurialism. And third, advocacy on behalf of innovation. Now I always say, that had this crisis occurred in Iowa, where I grew up, it would be a ghost town. But the motivation for people to pay attention here in 1985 was nobody wanted to leave San Diego. So they're willing to take risks that wouldn't take. I speak to groups from all over the world, three a week, who come to San Diego to study the model. And it's almost always the same. About the time they get ready to really make a change in their culture locally, oil goes to $100 a barrel. You know, everything gets good again. So the Canadians especially, I must have had 20 groups from Canada all trying to figure it out, and they're all gone now because oil's $100 a barrel, and they don't need the revenues and aren't willing to take the risk. So you heard we've helped start about a company a week in 22 years, 1,500 companies that Connect has helped start. We do this uh, on, on behalf of these innovators with our, through our membership. We have 250 members. We run 15 programs. We have 75 entrepreneurs and residents. These are former CEOs who are either between things or don't want to do another one but want to give back to the community. They all carry Connect business cards and they, on behalf of all the innovators, work with them free. We have 75 domain experts, accountants, lawyers, uh, marketing types, 
to do specific work for these innovations. We have about a thousand volunteers in our database and last year we did 300 events and had about 10,000 people attend our events. This is a busy slide. It's on our website if you want to look at our programs, but they're, they're really in three major areas. Access to capital. How do you help somebody with an idea find capital? The second is education, which is one of our core missions. And then we have a bunch of networking, recognition, connecting people events that we run and are very, very popular. And then the final piece, which is really not a program, is public policy. We are very, very active in public policy at the local, state, and federal level with anything that touches innovation. Workforce, capital formation, all of those issues. So why did this happen in San Diego and, and why is it happening in other places in addition to Silicon Valley? Well, there are really three conditions. Great research, talented people, and money, and many, many places have this. The research started at, in California or in San Diego with something very special. A hundred years ago, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography was established, and 50 years after that, Roger Revelle walked up on the Torrey Mesa, and he looked out over the Pacific and said, I would like to, to suggest we put a University of California campus here. And so the city fathers, and they were all men back then, did something extraordinary. They zoned the entire region scientific research. And the University of California was formed there. Two years later, Jonas Salk walked across the street and said, I'd like to put my institute there. Today, there are 52 institutes in a three-mile radius of where the University of California is. Half of those are on the campus, but these are all separate research institutes that have really, really clustered. Second issue is talent, and I'll tell you, having come to San Diego in 1989 from the East Coast, bringing a biotech company in tow, we imported almost all the talent. There was none existing that had industry experience. So I moved 60 families for my company, and that was the norm. You just you went to the East Coast, you raided the pharmaceutical companies, and you relocated them to San Diego. But we knew that wasn't sustainable, so we began an aggressive effort to work with all our teaching institutions to figure out how to get young people interested in what we do. The very first program I did at the University of California, San Diego, I made the suggestion that it would be really nice if the students with the scientific degrees had a little exposure to business and law and a few things practical. The head of, the, of the, the Dean of Students Affairs or Academic Affairs stood up and said, Mr. Roth, we don't train people, we educate them. And that same Dick Atkinson, who happened to be in the back of the room, stood up and said, Mr. Roth, we're going to fix this. And I can't tell you the change that took place as a result of that conversation. Six weeks ago, I spoke to the graduating class in biology. I started at 6. At 9 o'clock, there were still seven kids lined up at my car trying to talk to me about how to work in this industry. Just a sea change. Sea change that's taken place. And the same can be said for all the other. The community colleges, great support. The military, we got a ton of people out of the military. You know, if they could run a nuclear submarine, we figured their engineering skills could work in a pilot plant. So we used a lot of that. The last is money. Um, I failed to tell you that in 1985, there was one venture capitalist in San Diego, Gerard Capital. It was a small fund of about $25 million run by Buzz Woolley. And I will also say that the biggest struggle we had as a region was venture capital. But today, uh, thanks to a lot of work, not only in the grants area, which we, we come out consistently number one per capita, angel investors, we run Tech Coast Angels that connect a vibrant group of about 100 people doing a lot of our deals in the early stage. Venture capital being the most important to the health of a region. And these now are venture capital companies that are located in San Diego. So the list just keeps going. We made this a concerted effort to get VCs to locate in San Diego, not just branches, but move them to San Diego. So back to HyberTech and, re and the research cluster and what happened. Those are biotechs today. There are about 300 of them. You had the biomedical and devices. There's another couple hundred of those. So we have about 500 operating companies now just in the, in the industry. And then about four or five years ago, something else remarkably happened, and that was some of the large pharmaceutical companies decided for the first time ever to plop down 
research centers in the heart of this. So Pfizer, J and J, Lilly now is coming. Lilly just moved their worldwide headquarters for biotechnology to San Diego. And even though they kept the group in Indianapolis, the new group in San Diego is where the headquarters is going to be. Um, Novartis Research Institute and so on. 